Hello friends, welcome to the lectures of engineering thermodynamics. In earlier standard you have studied engineering thermodynamics or so the basic thermodynamics and maybe in the first standard or say along 12th or so even from the school level you are studying this subject. You are studying the concept of energies, various forms of energies, how does the energies are get converted from one form into another form. We have seen the laws of uh, thermodynamics and specifically the law, law of conservation of energy, law of conservation of mass. Uh, here in, in second year of mechanical engineering we will talk about, we will first of all revise all the laws of thermodynamics and we will see how these laws are applicable to the real life, real life situation, real life problem and some of the engineering devices like boiler, like turbine, compressor, like engine, so like pump, how these laws are applicable to all these devices and how does the energy is get conserved in every possible case, every case, right. So let us begin our lecture of engineering thermodynamics. At the beginning I would like to give you the introduction to the subject engineering thermodynamics, what it is. So let us begin. So all of you know the term energy. The term energy is nothing but the capacity to do work. If anything, any object has the capacity to do some work, not necessarily mechanical work only, but any kind of work, then we can say that object has the has some, some energy nearby it. Now there are various forms of energies as we have studied like, like potential energy, like kinetic energy, internal energy, pressure energy, then the light energy, wind energy, solar energy. So all these are the forms of various forms of energies, right. We have also seen that one energy in one particular form can be get converted into another form. For example, if I take down one example of engine, so like this is the engine, any engine. Now this engine take down fuel as the input, fuel as the input. So that engine is taking down fuel as the input and the fuel has the chemical energy. Once that fuel goes into the engine, it, it, it will start to burn and giving out some heat, heat to the device. So the fuel which has the chemical energy is get converted into the heat energy or so the internal energy of the burn gases. That inter, see first of all this fuel had the chemical energy. Then that chemical energy is get converted into, this is get converted into the internal energy. Then this internal energy is converted into again the pressure energy or say the mechanical work. Mechanical work, that mechanical work is obtained at the rotating crankshaft of the engine. Then out of that mechanical work and the total internal energy of the burn gases, some of the energy is finally going back to the, uh, going, going to what? The burn gases and finally that is exhausted to the atmosphere. So that is again the part of internal energy, internal energy. So all these forms of the energies we have seen, all these convergence we have seen, we have seen the governing law for the, con which is going to govern all these processes and that is the law of conservation of energy. Now what, what domain we are going to study in law of conservation of energy is that in law, of, we know the law of conservation of energy. What it is? It is, it states that energy can neither be created nor it can be destroyed, but it can be transferred from one form into another form. The total amount of energy of the universe or an isolated system remains constant, it remains conserved. So that is what the law of conservation of energy and we have seen in, I mean this is one simple example, a typical example, otherwise you can take down any other example, for example, some now right now the electricity uh, supply is available to us, so it has electrical energy nearby, nearby the terminals of the wire, it has somewhat electrical potential, it means it has the capacity to do work, it means it has energy. So this electrical energy once starts to flow through the wire in the form of electric current, so it will start to rotate the fan. So electrical energy is get converted into the mechanical work of the fan. So as the fan rotates, it, it pushes the air down 
and it displaces the air. So again, the mechanical work of the fan is converted into the kinetic energy of the air. So while the conversion of electrical energy into the mechanical work, there is a transfer, I mean there is some conversion, some part of the input energy that is electrical energy is converted into the heat energy. So that heat energy is just emitted out by the fan or so the electrical motor of the fan to the surrounding air. So heat energy or say the internal energy in the form of internal energy it will be get transferred when the internal energy from the fan body, the motor body is get transferred to the air then the flowing internal energy that we say it as the heat energy. So these are what some of the examples. So everywhere there is a energy conversion is taking place and energy from one form is get converted into the another form. But the total amount of energy of one isolated system remains constant, it always remains constant and the governing law for that is I will say one of the most fundamental law of nature that is the law of conservation of energy. Right. Now in, in law of conservation of energy we do talk about all these forms of energy. Right. So out of all these forms of energy I would like to, two, I would like to take on two specific cases, one is the heat and second is the work, work I mean the mechanical work. So whenever the energy, energy possessed by the object or say energy in mechanical work in the form of mechanical work and energy in the form of heat and if there is a conversion of one form of energy, now this heat is one of the form of the energy and the work is another form of the energy. Whenever there is a con conversion of heat energy into the mechanical work or mechanical work into the heat energy, so the study of conversion of these two energies into one another, that is what, that is what the domain of the subject thermodynamics. And in thermodynamics, we will be talking about heat and work continuously. Uh, heat and work and the conversion of heat energy into the mechanical work, mechanical work into the heat energy. And continuously till the end of the subject, we will be talking about these two forms of energies and the conversion, conversion of them. Right? Of course, we will talk about some internal energy or say some other forms of energy also, but mostly we will be dealing with this one. So, I would like to define the subject thermodynamics, engineering thermodynamics as it is the branch of science or so the branch of mechanical engineering which deals with the study of the conversion of heat energy or so the internal energy into the mechanical work and mechanical work into the heat. So that is what the subject is. Now let us begin with some of the terminologies we will be using in the subject engineering thermodynamics and these terminologies are also the some of the basic definitions and sometimes questions are asked onto these definitions also. So let us begin with the first one system. Now the system means system also called as the thermodynamic system. System means any any device or say anything any matter which is under thermodynamic study. Thermodynamic study means what? We talk about uh, we talk about what uh, the temperature variation, pressure variation, work variation, uh, heat transfer heat rejected by the body, absorbed by the body, so enthalpy, so all these are what the some, some of the properties of the thermodynamic properties of the system, we will, see, we will see what are these thermodynamic properties, in detail we are going to study these properties and the change in these properties we are going to study. Now the matter which is under the thermodynamic study or so the domain, the volume which is under the thermodynamic study, we say it as the system. For example, if I take down a vessel and put down some water into it or say anything, so like some any any gas into it and if this is the gas contained in a closed container and I am simply heating it, if I am providing the heat, so heat will be get transferred to this air inside it, any whatever the gas inside it. So I will say this is the system, this is the system, this is the system, right. In another case, if I take down instead of this closed, if you take down a, a pressure cooker at your home, the pressure cooker at your home, so this is the pressure cooker, the whistle over here, so this is the pressure cooker, you, ha you are having somewhat water inside it and you are heating this pressure cooker so that the water over here is get heated, it will start to boil at its saturation temperature 
obviously the pressure will be over here will be little more than the outside pressure and it will start to boil so this this entire thing is the system this is the system right so anything any matter or say any region into the space which is under thermodynamic study or thermodynamic observation we say that particular thing as the system so some of the examples are over here next okay system means one more point i would like to highlight if i uh, one more example i would like to take down for the system and i will tell you what what exactly is the system precisely system means what say so this is the system which is nothing but the piston cylinder arrangement and let us say this is the thickness of the piston, thickness of the cylinder. So, this is the thickness of the cylinder and somewhat air is trapped inside it. This is the air over here. With the aid of this piston and cylinder, you can uh, apply somewhat force over here and by applying the somewhat force onto the piston, you can make, create, maintain, increase or decrease the pressure inside the system, inside uh, or pressure of this air. Now, we are observing the change in the pressure, volume, temperature, enthalpy, entropy of this particular air. So, this is the system. Now, system means specifically what is the system? I will say this much region, this much region, region of air or say whatever the gas inside it is the system. This is the system. This is the system. Remember that this solid wall of this of the cylinder the solid piston is not the part of the system i will say these are the part of the surrounding so this only only air over here is the system right next now there is another part another point terminology that is that is surrounding surrounding means anything apart from the system this is the system we have taken this as the case now anything into the space which is beyond the system whatever the matter is which is outside the system that is the surrounding so i will say this part as the surrounding over here this is the surrounding this is surrounding so this surrounding air is also it is the surrounding even the cylinder wall and the piston are the part of the surrounding, not the part of the system. So, anything into the space which is beyond or say the out of the system, we say it as the surrounding, right. The third one is the boundary, the system or we can say it as the system boundary. System boundary. Now, what is the system boundary? It is the line or more in most of the cases it is the surface maybe straight flat curved anything which separate out the system from the surrounding so it is simply the boundary i mean uh, the physical boundary of the system and surrounding right for example in this case i will say if this is the system and this is the surrounding then this boundary over here this is the boundary i will say this is the boundary system boundary which separate out the system and the surrounding right so that's what the system boundary is now again this system boundary is of various types uh, i'll say i would like to classify the various system boundaries as one as the fixed boundary and movable or we can also say it as the flexible boundary the second one is <coughs> fixed movable then uh, second classification is the real boundary and the imaginary boundary I would like to tell you what is fixed boundary and the movable boundary also this is also known as the flexible flexible boundary now what is this fixed boundary now take on the case of the piston cylinder arrangement in this case the cylinder wall over here this is the cylinder wall which is being fixed it is not going to move at all what are the motion of the piston is what are the motion and the temperature pressure variation of the gas is this boundary is not going to move not going to deform also so this is the rigid one i will say this is the fixed boundary or so the rigid boundary right 
the second one is the movable or so the flexible boundary Flex, movable means what the piston you can see over here depending upon the force acting onto the top of the piston the piston can move up or can move down so this is the movable boundary or say I can say the flexible boundary right the second classification is the real boundary or say the imaginary boundary now in cases some of the cases the boundaries are imaginary for example if I if I take down some say some glass of water say this is the glass of water and somewhat water is there inside it right now I will say the bound see the system contains the water as well as some vapor over here water vapor over here so the system boundary now it is diffi little difficult to trace out the system boundary exactly the reason is the glass is open at the top surface right so the system boundary I can say this is the system boundary over here this is the real boundary but if there is continuous evaporation of the water over here in a case if the water is heated water and it is boiling water then continuously water is get heated and you vapors are coming out and going out of the glass so like this so in that case in that case we no, boundary is over here on, on that is the inner surface of the glass that's fine but what about what about the top surface so here we need to imagine a top surface which is enclosing the glass physically there is no one as such boundary over there but we need to imagine a boundary to be over there so that we can consider this as the closed system I mean a, a closed boundary so this boundary is the real boundary and this is the imaginary boundary so these are what the classifications of boundaries various system boundaries so these are what uh, okay one more one more nomenclature is remaining that is the universe now what is universe universe means this is the system this is the boundary and this is the surrounding so totally the system surrounding and the boundary is nothing but what this I will say it is the universe this is the universe right so these are what some of the terminologies in thermodynamics now we will see some of the uh, some types of systems various types of systems that we, we will be dealing with in thermodynamics so what are, what are these types we will see now even you might have studied that open system closed system and isolated system now let us begin with the first one let us begin with the first one system and in this one first type is open system open system now what is open system in a case if you are having a system such that see thermodynamics means what it is the study of heat and work conversion of heat and work conversion of heat into work work into heat practically saying it is the I mean if this is the system then how much is the work transfer over here and how much is the heat transfer over here so study of work transfer and heat, heat transfer is nothing but thermodynamics now here is the system in which here is the system means what take down one engine the petrol engine as all of you most of you people use this, uh, the bike to come to college so you are having a bike maybe running on the uh, petrol as fuel so this is the engine of the bike so this engine continuously take in the fuel the fuel is going on in exhausting the burnt gases burn gases your your bike continuously exhaust the burn gases whatever the combustion is taking place inside the engine so the gas is produced due to that the engine has to exhaust it to the atmosphere at the same time while the engine is running it will become hot due to the combustion of the fuel inside it so as it becomes hot it will continuously reject heat to the surrounding Q at the same time it gives out the mechanical work at the shaft <coughs> And that's the reason your bike can go ahead <coughs> sorry 
the engine starts to run it consumes some fuel convert that chemical energy into the heat energy heat into the mechanical work the mechanical work you are getting out from the shaft rotating shaft and with the aid of that mechanical work your your bike can go ahead at the same time the engine exhausts the gases to the surrounding so if i consider the system boundary to be this much this is the system boundary then across this boundary fuel is coming in the heat is going out the gases are going out and the work is also going out so i will say the energy is crossing the boundary q is the energy the heat energy the internal energy the energy is crossing the boundary as well as the work is also crossing the boundary this w work is also crossing the boundary second over here mass the fuel means what the, there is fuel has a mass mass is crossing the boundary and going into the boundary and the burn gases are leaving the boundary i mean of course along with the fuel there will be air air has to come inside so air mass flow rate of air will be also there and fuel as well as air are crossing the boundary and going into the system and after the combustion the mixture of burn gases will come out of the system it means what in this system the energy is crossing the boundary as well as the mass is crossing the boundary and such a system we say it as the open system some typical examples of open system are if you take any things like compressor in case of compressor you fill up the air into the into the tire or say any of the pneumatic device what compressor does it takes down the air from the surrounding pressurizes it and deliver it to the device right so air is coming into the system and going out of it so mass is crossing the boundary at the same time at the same time mechanical work we need to keep running the compressor so for that we need to give the mechanical work to the compressor so work is also crossing the boundary at the same time while compressing the gases the temperature of the gases increases and it starts to reject the heat to the surrounding while the, while it is get compressed so the heat is also crossing the boundary so that's the open system if you take down a, a cup of <coughs> glass of water which is boiling one or so even not boiling even if it keep some water into it so water will continuously keep on evaporating so it will keep on transferring the matter as well as the heat so that's the open system right and like that there are thousands of examples of open system you will come across okay so that's what the open system the second one is closed system closed system now closed system is a system in which there is a transfer of energy but no transfer of matter matter or mass for example <coughs> for example if this is a piston cylinder arrangement and you are having a piston over here the piston can move up and down but this piston is tight enough air tight air cannot leak through these joints i mean from this context so whatever the air trapped inside it it has the mass so like mass is equal to 1 kg the mass remains constant if you are compressing it it means you are doing some what work work transfer is taking place <coughs> if the gas is get compressed its temperature will increase it will start to reject the heat to the surrounding q it means that work transfer is taking place heat transfer is taking place but the mass of the gas inside it it is constant neither the air is coming into the cylinder nor the air from the cylinder is going out of out of it so delta m for this system is zero that is the mass is constant and no matter is crossing the boundary so that's what the closed system is some other examples say take down a take down a container carrying some what gas inside it now this is a constant the volume is constant this is the rigid tank so volume cannot change and if you are heating it or say cooling it if you are heating it means you are transferring the heat to it the temperature will increase the pressure will increase the internal energy will increase but there is a transfer of only energy taking place over here not the matter matter inside it is being the same so that's what the example of the closed system now the third one is the isolated system
isolated system. Isolated system is a system in which <coughs> isolated system is a system in which no matter transfer takes place, no heat transfer of energy trans transfer takes place. Well, here isolated system is has to be physically isolated from the surrounding. Physically isolated means what? It is provided by some insulation over here. So this is the insulation layer. So this is the insulation layer. So whatever the matter over here, it will keep as it is. No transfer of matter is taking place over here. No transfer of heat or energy is taking place over here. You cannot transfer the heat or you cannot take down the take, take, take the heat out of it. You cannot transfer the work or say you cannot take out work from it. At the same time, no matter is crossing the boundary. A typical example is the thermal flask that you use to store uh, hot or say the cold water. It is basically in, I mean insulated and provided with a, some vacuum, vacuum cavity surrounding, surrounding to it so that the heat transfer to the surrounding will be minimum. So that is what the example of the isolated system, right. <coughs> I suggest all of you to just list out the thermodynamic systems that you can see around you at your home, at your workplace or so wherever you are going in the entire day and just segregate them based upon whether it is a closed, open or isolated. You can come across many such situation where you will get some, some systems are closed systems, some are open, some are isolated. Most of the cases you will get the open system, some, in some cases, few cases you will get closed system and very rarely isolated system. Okay? So let us go ahead. Let us talk about one, one more domain of uh, or say one, uh, the approach of studying the subject engineering thermodynamics. There are two, way, two different approaches in which the subject can be studied. One is the macroscopic approach. Macroscopic approach. And the second is microscopic approach. Now let us see what is this macroscopic and microscopic approach. <coughs> now micros macroscopic approach means if you are having a system, a thermodynamic system say like this and you are going to perform some operation onto it. Perform some operation means what you are going to heat it, you are going to cool it, you are going to compress it or say expand it. So while doing so, what thermodynamic properties are changing? For example, the pressure is changing volume, temperature, enthalpy, internal energy U, so the work done, heat transfer, so all these are, all these are the thermodynamic properties and these properties will keep on changing as you are performing some process, right. So for example, if I am compressing it, I am transferring the work. If the work is get transferred, the pressure will increase, the volume will decrease, the temperature will increase and so on so. so here in macroscopic approach, we observe the variation of all these properties at macroscopic level, at larger level that we can see, we can physically feel it, we can observe it, we can recognize it. For example, if for to note down the pressure, if I need to attach a pressure gauge over here and whatever the pressure gauge uh, reading it will show to me that is the pressure of the system, right. In macroscopic approach, I have nothing to do with what is happening with this one particular molecule of the gas, with what velocity this molecule is going, in what direction it is going, how much is the mass of the molecule, how much is the number, how much are the number of molecules over here, or so the number, molecular density over here, number density we can say. If this molecule is going with certain velocity and striking this wall and boun bouncing back with some, some other velocity or say the same velocity, how much is the moment of transfer taking place due to this collision or say while 
this molecule is colliding with another molecule how much is the momentum transfer for taking place over here or this molecule is, is moving with one particular velocity v1 this molecule is moving with another particular velocity v2 how much is the difference between them or how much is the maximum velocity how much is the mean probable velocity rms velocity root mean square velocity of the, all these molecules the macroscopic approach of studying thermodynamics has nothing to do or nothing to worry about what is happening at microscopic level at molecular level what changes are taking place we need not to take care of we will simply observe how much is the pressure and that pressure can be measured with there of some pressure de measuring device we need to observe the volume how much is the volume that you can measure with the aid of taking down the dimensions of that we can measure the temperature temperature by attaching a thermo i mean whatever the thermometer or say thermocouple whatever the temperature measuring device you are going to use with the aid of that you can measure the temperature but what is happening at microscopic level i mean molecular level that has nothing to do in macroscopic approach of studying thermodynamics this approach is also known as classical thermodynamics classical thermodynamics this is this classical thermodynamics or macroscopic approach of studying thermodynamics the next one is microscopic approach now in microscopic approach what what do we do is say this is the system system surrounding boundary that you know of course we we talk and study the pressure volume temperature enthalpy all the thermodynamic properties and their changes in the, these thermodynamic properties how does one change affects another change how does change in one property affects another property that of course we will see but here in microscopic approach or this is also known as statistical thermodynamics this is also known as the statistical thermodynamics now in statistical thermodynamics or some microscopic level we measure all these properties we study these properties but at microscopic level i mean we observe one by one molecule and we take down one by one molecule into the consideration we observe the mass of the molecule the velocity of the molecule how does the pressure affects the velocity of the molecule or so how does the velocity of the molecule affects the temperature what is the relation of the momentum transfer of these molecules onto the wall of the container with pressure if the velocity obviously it is clear now even you can understand without knowing much much information about the thermodynamics it is clear that if this is the molecule and if it is striking this piston and bouncing back it will transfer its momentum to the cylinder sorry to the piston obviously if i increase the velocity see it initial velocity is v v1 or say v and this is minus v so there will be somewhat momentum transfer is taking place over here in a case if v is get increased obviously the momentum transfer will increase momentum transfer is increased means what the pressure sorry the force is increased it means the pressure is increased so in this way you can see the velocity of the molecule of the gas is directly related with the pressure the velocity or say another thing say instead of select 2 3 say initially there are select uh, i mean n number of molecules if num number of molecules into the containers are doubled so obviously at the beginning the momentum transfer was something now when the number of molecules are get doubled it means the number density of the molecule is get doubled will it affect the pressure yes for sure it will affect the pressure right the pressure will also increase right so in this way we study at microscopic level how does the molecules are behaving what are their speeds what are their masses what are the, what are their number densities what are their root mean square velocity or some most probable velocity all that all these things we will see how does the thermodynamic system uh, behaves in a case if we take down a monoatomic gas or a diatomic gas you know monoatomic gas means what uh, uh, gas or say the matter which has only one atom into their molecule for example all the inert gases like helium then argon neon krypton xenon 
so these are the monoatomic gases diatomic gases means what there are two two atoms into their molecule for example oxygen o2 nitrogen n2 or like uh, h2 hydrogen so these are what the diatomic gases triatomic gases so like co2 say c and o2 carbon oxygen and oxygen so there are three atoms into the molecule so the thermodynamic behavior of a particular system or so the gas changes even if the the molecular structure the number of atoms into a molecule are get changed so macroscopic approach has nothing to do with what is happening with the molecular level but in statistical thermodynamics or say microscopic approach we need to take care of that perhaps we do take care of that thing only that is the main point right so in these two different ways we are going to study this subject one is classical thermodynamics or macroscopic approach and the second one is the microscopic approach or statistical thermodynamics now let us define one more term that is the property or say the thermodynamic property thermodynamic property thermodynamic property means we define the system but for to define a system we must have some parameter to define it otherwise without aid of this parameter we cannot define the system and we cannot get the state of the system or so we cannot understand the system for example simply saying system is not enough we need to define it how it is and how it is defined it is defined with the aid of some thermodynamic properties now what is thermodynamic property thermodynamic property means it is any measurable parameter any measurable or any physical quantity which is measurable directly or indirectly of that particular system for example if this is the system right and into this system this system contains some gas inside it it has now as this is a gas how will you define it how will you tell the specification of this system i can tell the specification of the system by mentioning its pressure how much is the pressure that i can mention pressure is something i can mention its volume it has certain volume i can mention its temperature it has certain temperature right so i can mention its internal energy it has somewhat internal energy right so these are what these are some physical quantities measurable physical quantities which can be measured directly or indirectly and these measurable parameters of a system is known as the thermodynamic property right now there are some properties which can be measured directly whereas some of the thermodynamic properties cannot be measured directly they need to be calculated they need to may need to be measured indirectly for example pressure i can directly attach a pressure gauge over here pressure measuring device select like burden tube pressure gauge or so the youtube manometer and i can measure the pressure of of this system so this is what the direct measurement volume volume direct measurement as well as indirect measurement also direct measure means what uh, you can have the marking on to this this uh, boundary the solid cylinder with the aid of which you can guess about the volume of this volume of the system temperature i can attach a thermometer over here directly you will get the temperature measured in terms of some degree celsius so these are the properties which can be measured directly internal energy internal energy internal energy cannot be measured directly since we don't have any such device to measure it with i mean directly so what we need to do is we need to measure some other measurable parameter like temperature mass and then we can we can calculate it by some some calculation so these are what uh, another property which can be calculated so in short these are the thermodynamic properties right now this thermodynamic properties are again classified into two categories one is the intensive property and second is the extensive property extensive property now what is the, what is intensive property it is the property it is a thermodynamic property which is not the function of mass 
whereas extensive property is the property which is which is the function of mass it is it is not the function of mass whereas extensive property is the property which is the function of mass i would like to explain it in detail function of mass means what it means the intensive property is nothing but it is the th that thermodynamic property which does not depend upon the mass of the system how much is the mass of the system it has nothing to do right for example the pressure now take on this system this is the system whose mass is let us say whose mass let us say m is equal to 10 kg now if i measure the pressure over here it will show me some what pressure let us say it is 10 bar now the pressure of 10 kg of mass is 10 bar if i put down a partition into it and take down only half of the system into consideration so mass of the gas over here will be about 5 kg but will the pressure change over here no the pressure will remain same so it is not the question how much is the mass of the system if you take down 10 kg if you take down the pressure of 10 kg mass of the system or say even small domain only 1 kg domain over here and if you check out the pressure over here that will show the same reading so in short the pressure is the term or the pressure is the property that thermodynamic property which is which is not the function of mass so i will say the pressure as the intensive property it is the intensive property in the similar manner the temperature is also the in intensive property for example uh, one more example i would like to give you over here itself in the classroom itself if i consider the entire classroom as as a thermodynamic system a open an open system since the door is open the windows are open the air is coming from that side air is going over this side so there is a transfer of transfer of uh, mass is taking place at the same time we are having some fans and tubes you know the human body like i are over here and they are continuously emitting heat to the surrounding air so the air will be get heated so obviously this heat has to be get transferred to the surrounding i mean out out of the classroom so there is a energy transfer is also taking place so this is the open system the the classroom is the open system next now into this open system if i check out the pressure of this room at one particular corner say over here right and pressure is found to be atmospheric pressure which is equal to 101325 pascal right so that's what the atmospheric pressure is now instead of taking down the pressure of the entire room entire classroom if i put down one partition into the classroom and take down only the half classroom into consideration and again if i measure the pressure you will find the pressure to be the same that is also the atmospheric pressure so this pressure doesn't whereas the mass is half earlier the mass of the air probably say 100 kg of air is let's say 100 kg of air is present into this room so earlier it was 100 kg and the pressure was 1 bar approximately now if i put down a partition into this classroom so as to divide this classroom into two equal parts two equal volumes so obviously the mass will become half so earlier it was 50 kg sorry 100 kg now it will become 50 kg so the pressure again same so mass agar kam bhi ho gaya hai to pressure same hi ho raha hai and same is the case case of the temperature also so these are what the intensive properties these are the intensive properties whereas some of the properties for example this one the volume the total volume let's say this room has say about 10 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter means 25 into 10 that is 25 to 250 meter cube is the volume of this room so out of this two, i'm i'm taking down this 250 meter cube as roughly rough i mean consider this is 250 meter cube is the volume of this room so 250 meter cube is the volume of this room and the total volume in this in that case it will be equals to v capital v and that will be equals to 250 meter cube is the volume that is the thermodynamic property but if i divide this room into two equal part by putting down one partition into it and one part if i consider and if i check out the volume of that part you will find the volume in that case v dash will become equals to 125 meter cube probably am i right 
volume has got changed since the mass is get changed so this property this thermodynamic property volume depends upon the mass of the system and that's why this is the extensive property this is not the intensive property this is the extensive property and like that like volume internal energy is also extensive property the total enthalpy is the extensive property the total internal energy is the extensive property mass the total mass itself is the extensive property the total weight of the system is the extensive property whereas there are some specific properties specific means what specific means specific means if i take down the volume if i take down the volume as a thermodynamic property i will say this is the extensive property why extensive since the volume of the system depends upon the mass of the system but if i take down the specific volume specific volume that is equals to small v is equals to capital v divided by the m the mass of the system then this system will become intensive property this property specific volume will become intensive property the reason okay again reciprocal of this one that is the density the density of the system the density of the system rho that is equal to the mass per unit volume this is also the intensive property see we, we i talked about the specific properties specific means what specific volume density is nothing but what the specific mass specific weight specific enthalpy specific entropy specific internal energy so all these properties are get i mean total properties are get divided by the mass so so as to get the specific properties so all the specific properties are not the function of mass right so they are mass independent so these properties are the intensive properties these are the intensive properties right now even it may appears that uh, the term mass is coming over here into the equation so how they can be independent of mass but it is not so you you just just revise just try to understand these things example a typical example i would like to tell you uh, take down the density this density why it is intensive property if i take down this entire room and uh, take if i take down the density of the air over here or say entire room the density is say 1.293 kg per meter cube if i take down the half part of it the density will remain same if i take down water water as the matter into the system if i take down the water say 100 liter of water into a tank its density is about 1000 kg per meter cube if we take down only 1 liter of water still the density is the same if i take down 1 ml of water still the density is the same that is 1000 kg per meter cube so density is not the function of mass so that's why it is the intensive property i erased that right so these are what the properties i think uh, today we should we should stop over here today we have seen what is thermodynamics what is energy energy conversion what is thermodynamics that is out of all these energy conversion we we do focus up on heat and mechanical work then we have seen <coughs> system surrounding boundary universe various types of system various types of boundaries then we have seen uh, two approaches of studying thermodynamics one is the statistical thermodynamics second is the classical thermodynamics then we have seen thermodynamic property then we have seen uh, various types of thermodynamic properties intensive properties and extensive properties and some classification of that so i think we should stop over here we will continue it into the next lecture thank you